Hi, and welcome to Module 4 of the Linux Board Porting Online Series. This is our final lecture of the series, and I'll be taking you through some of the details of how the source code for Linux and U-Boot is structured. Here we see the four steps to porting U-Boot or the Linux kernel to a custom board. The first step is to modify the build configuration. The build configuration file specifies which interfaces will be supported by the U-Boot build. If a custom board adds a new interface that was not present in the previous version, this interface will need to be added into the build configuration file. Note that this step does not include the porting of peripheral driver support, which is accomplished in the third and fourth steps shown on this diagram. This step only selects the interfaces that will be built into the image. The second step is to set the pin multiplexing. This step goes hand in hand with the first step since the additional removal of support for a given interface will generally lead to the inclusion or removal of that peripheral's pins from the multiplexed output pins. The third and fourth steps relate to the modification of board level code in order to support new or modified hardware. Modifying the build configuration will add support for a given interface that was not previously there, but if the external hardware to a peripheral is changed, it may also be necessary to modify the code that controls that peripheral. Firstly, the platform data may need to be updated. The platform data is a series of C structures that define parameters specific to the various hardware components of a system. Secondly, the initialization function for the interface may need to be modified as well. The first step to updating U-Boot in the Linux kernel for a custom board is to locate the source code. Source code for both is included in TI's Software Development Kit, or SDK, inside of the board support directory. At the right of this slide, we see the contents of the U-Boot source code directory. In a moment, we'll take a closer look at some of these files. Recall that the first step of board porting is to modify the configuration file, which is shown on the left of this slide. Here we see the organization of U-Boot code. The configuration file contains a number of preprocessor definitions which control the inclusion or exclusion of various functionality. Within the U-Boot source code, these preprocessor switches are used to specify which C functions will be built into the executable. For instance, if the config NAND preprocessor switch is defined, the support for the NAND flash will be built into the image. The config SPL build switch determines whether both an SPL and U-Boot will be built if it is defined, or if just a U-Boot will be built if it is undefined. If either U-Boot is small enough to fit in the internal memory, or if you are booting from NAND flash, which is execute in place, this may be left undefined. Otherwise, you will need to build an SPL, and this switch should be defined. The location of the configuration file in the source code tree is within the include configs subdirectory. Usually when someone creates a new board, they will copy this configuration, which was created for the AM335X evaluation module, into a new configuration file that is specific to their custom hardware. Once a new configuration file has been created for the custom hardware, the developer will want to update the pin multiplexer settings to ensure that any newly added interfaces are exposed. Because modern processors have a large number of peripherals, and because the size of processor packaging is generally limited by the number of pins, all processors employ multiplexing of peripherals on the device's physical pins. Multiple peripherals share a single physical pin and any peripherals which share a pin cannot be used simultaneously. Furthermore, if the pin multiplexing is not configured correctly, the signals for the desired peripheral will not be available. The first step to setting the pin multiplexing is to determine the pin MUX register values corresponding to the desired configuration. Fortunately, TI provides a pin MUX utility to aid with this process. The PinMux utility is a Windows GUI that allows you to select the peripherals you will be using by push buttons. As in-use peripherals are selected, any peripherals which share physical pins and are therefore conflicting will be grayed out. This allows a quick and accurate reality check to ensure that all the desired peripherals may be used simultaneously. Furthermore, the tool provides the pin multiplex register values corresponding to the desired configuration. 
Once the PINMUX register values have been determined, the U-Boot source code must be updated to reflect the new settings. This step, as well as the majority of the remaining peripheral configuration, is performed in the board file. The board file is a configuration file that provides the top-level interface to the board adaptation layer, which is the portion of U-Boot source code that drives the device peripherals. In many cases, hardware changes can be completely managed from within the board file, although for more drastic changes in hardware, it may be required to modify the code in the board adaptation layer itself. Recall from the first presentation of this series that the code for both U-Boot and the Linux kernel is organized into architecture-specific, SOC-specific, and board-specific layers. The board file is part of the board layer and is the primary location of board-specific initialization and therefore the location where the developer will spend the majority of their porting effort. Here we see the location of the header files for the SOC layer and the C files for the board layer of the U-Boot source code. Generally, a board port should only require changes to the code in the board layer, located at board slash ti slash am335x, and the majority of these changes will likely reside in the board file, which is named board.c and located in this directory. The board layer interfaces to the SOC layer, so while it will generally not be necessary to modify the code in the SOC layer, it is useful to locate the SOC header files as these are the functions that are used in the board layer code to interface the SOC to external hardware. These headers are located at arch slash arm slash include slash asm slash arch dash am33xx. The board file is primarily comprised of a set of initialization routines and their corresponding initialization structures. For some devices, such as DDR, which have a well-defined interface and only vary according to timing information, it is generally only necessary to update the configuration structure. For external devices that have a more variable interface, it may be necessary to also modify the initialization routine in order to accommodate the new hardware. These initialization routines are called from within one of two functions. S underscore init is the entry point for the SPL, also known as the MLO, and board underscore init is the entry point for uboot.img. Taking a closer look at the SPL code, which is entered at S underscore init, we see that the SPL is responsible for some low-level configuration, the phase lock loop for clocking, the real-time clock, the watchdog timer, and a few other interfaces, and also sets up the DDR so that the full uboot.img can be copied into external memory. Note the use of the pound if def switch. Various preprocessor definitions set in the configuration file, which is at slash include slash config slash am335x underscore evm.h, as introduced at the beginning of this presentation, are used to include or exclude various code from the build. Here, the config underscore SPL underscore build switch is used to either include or exclude the various SPL initialization routines. The entry point for uboot.img is board underscore init, as shown here. The uboot code will initialize any peripherals for which support has been configured in the configuration file and which the SPL has not already configured. These include I2C, the General Purpose Memory Controller, and the UART. Note the use of the config underscore SPL underscore build switch. If no SPL is built, an additional function, board underscore EVM underscore init, is called to handle the initialization that would otherwise have been done in the SPL. Note that the function I2C init takes two configuration parameters config underscore sys underscore i squared c underscore speed and config underscore sys underscore i squared c underscore slave. This is an example of an initialization function which uses initialization structures. In many instances, if a new external device is added to the i squared c interface, it may only be required to modify these initialization parameters without a need to modify the i squared c init function itself. In summary, support for specific interfaces is included in or excluded from the U-Boot build via the configuration file, 
which is located at include slash configs slash am335x underscore evm dot h. The code to support these interfaces is driven from the board file, which is the top level entry point for the board specific code, and is located at board slash ti slash am335x slash board dot c. Support code for the board file is located in the board directory, which is board slash ti slash am335x. The board layer interfaces to the SOC layer. In most cases, the SOC code will not require modification, but it is helpful to locate the header files for this interface, which are at arch slash arm slash include slash asm slash arch dash am33xx. This concludes Module 4 of the Linux Board Porting Online series. Module 4 is the final lecture portion of the series. The next three modules will be lab exercises where we will set up a debugging environment for U-Boot from source code using JTAG. And the final three modules of the series will be doing the same thing but for the Linux kernel.